let me read to you our text for our God's Word for today devotional in the book of Acts, chapter 12, verses 18 to 24. And this is the continuation of our story in the life of Peter's imprisonment. And now we have a King Herod who pictures, who, who is the icon of pride. And let me read to you this text today in this part of Acts, particularly in verses 18 to 24. Now, when the day came, there was no little disturbance among the soldiers over what had become of Peter. And after Herod searched for him and did not find him, he examined the sentries and ordered that they should be put to death. Then he went down from Judea to Caesarea and spent time there. Now Herod was angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon. And they came to him with one accord, and having persuaded Blastus, the king's chamberlain, they asked for peace because their country depended on the king's country for food. On an appointed day, Herod put on his royal robes, took his seat upon the throne, and delivered an oration to them. And the people were shouting, The voice of a god and not of a man. Immediately an angel of the Lord struck him, struck him down because he did not give God the glory, and he was eaten by worms and breathed his lust. But the word of God increased and multiplied. Pride destroys. That's the principle that we can learn in the Bible. Pride goes before destruction. Whenever a person is pr proud, then his demise will follow. Destruction follows. Here in this story, the soldiers were disturbed to realize that Peter had escaped. And they should be fearful. Their fear was founded because of King Herod. King Herod had anticipated the day of Peter's execution. Remember, he was so happy that the Jews were happy that he killed James. He beheaded James. Now he imprisoned Peter in order to execute him, in order to please the Jews as well. But when he found out that Peter was, has escaped and cannot be found, he was mad. He became mad so much so much so that he executed the sin trace of guards. He was so mad that he cannot find Peter again. So Herod, after here, he went down from Judea to settle at Caesarea Maritima. Why? Because Caesarea Maritima is the capital of the Roman government in the region. So temporarily, Herod was staying in Judea, but after here, he moved back to Caesarea Maritima to stay there. And our account also tells us that there was a conflict between Agrippa and the, the regions of Tyre and Sidon. But we can see the language here that it suggested that they argued really violently because of political rivalry or, or establishing control. So Tyre and Sidon, these are two cities in Phoenicia. This is found in the northern part, part of Galilee. But one day, the people of the of Tyre and Sidon came to him, came to Herod with one accord. And having persuaded Blastos, Blastos was King Herod's chamberlain, or he was the trusted personal assistant of Herod. They asked for peace. And the reason behind that is because their country depended on the king's country for food. So they now had um, agreed together. Somehow they must have like an amicable settlement about, about their conflict. And King Herod, having established all this power, he now expressed his pride. One appointed day, Herod put on his royal robes. He took his seat upon the throne and delivered an oration to them. And the response of the people was astounding because they were shouting, the voice of a God and not of a man. Perhaps he's 
speech and his oration was really captivating. I believe it was empowered by somehow demonic or devilish power so that the people attributed him like God, not as a man. It was pure madness. His eccentric behavior had caused him to rob God with the glory. The God was the one supposed to be to receive only the glory, but he rubbed it from him. The people equated him to be like God, and he loved it. The, the consequence was very sad, because immediately an angel of the Lord struck him down. He did not give God the glory. And he was eaten by worms and breathless last. Surely, this was a horrible sight to, for a king to be eaten by worms alive. This is far more tragic than what happened to King Nebuchadnezzar, who was humiliated also by God because, like him, Nebuchadnezzar also extolled himself like God. So God has put him down so that he crawled as an animal alone in the fields eating grass. So God humiliated King Nebuchadnezzar. But this story of Herod being eaten by worms alive is more tragic, isn't it? Now, when we look at this example, when we look at this story in the book of Acts, let's remember that God deserves all the glory. Isaiah says in Isaiah 42 verse 8, I am the Lord, talking about God. I am the Lord. That is my name. My glory I give to no other. So God is a jealous God. He would share his glory to another. According to, Pete, to, to Paul in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 14, God is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He should be the Lord of all. Otherwise, he is not Lord at all. Thus, for each one of us today, let's remember what, what Paul had admonished us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, that whether we eat or drink or whatever we do, we have to do all to the glory of God. He deserves it. He is the sovereign God. And like, the John, like John the Baptist, he expressed in John 30, 3, 30, 30, that Jesus should increase and we must decrease. That's the sad story of Herod. Herod extolled himself like God, but he was humiliated by God, eaten by worms, miserable, horrible death. So let me close today with the exhortation and with this thought that whatever we are going to do today, whatever we think and wherever we go, let us think of how we can glorify God alone. Let's not rob him of his glory. We might say, sole Dio Gloria, to God be the glory alone. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this story that expressed how jealous you are towards your glory, that nobody can rob it from you. Uh, it's a sad, horrible story that we can read how King Herod, a very proud king, was eaten alive by worms. It's, it's really tragic, but you have shown the truth and you have proven yourself that you are our God, who is sovereign, who does not share your glory to anyone else. And Lord, let it be that this world will see your glory. Let it be that many will come to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ so that there will be many who will be worshippers of God truly in their hearts who will continue to ascribe to you the glory only due to your name. Thank you for this reminder. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.